John Parker, a 35-year-old entrepreneur, was known for his steadfast principles and a string of gas stations spread across the northern state. Despite his success, John often found himself engrossed in the minutiae of his business, ensuring that every aspect ran smoothly. The early morning sun cast long shadows as John pulled into the parking lot of his flagship gas station. His brows furrowed in frustration. The reports from this location were troubling. Morning, John, called Mike Harris, his old friend and former business rival, as he approached. The two had once competed fiercely in the tyre business before John transitioned to gas stations. Their rivalry had cooled, evolving into a mutual respect and friendship. Mike, just the man I wanted to see, John replied, managing a tight smile. I've got a persistent issue at this station. Shoplifting is rampant and employee performance is inconsistent. Mike raised an eyebrow. His interest peaked. Tell me more. As they walked towards the station office, John explained, I've reviewed the security footage and it's baffling. The shoplifters are too subtle, or maybe I'm looking in the wrong places. It's frustrating because I pay the staff well and offer flexible schedules. I can't figure out why this station is underperforming. Mike nodded thoughtfully. It sounds like a tricky situation. Have you considered that it might not be the customers, but someone on the inside? John sighed, running a hand through his hair. I've thought about it, but I can't accuse my employees without evidence. I want to trust them, but this station is getting harsh reviews and losing merchandise. They entered the office, the smell of coffee lingering in the air. John gestured to the chairs, and they both sat down. I need to get to the bottom of this, Mike. It's affecting the station's reputation and my peace of mind. Mike leaned back contemplating. John, your principles are your strength, but sometimes you need to dig deeper. Maybe start by getting to know your employees better. Build that trust and see if anyone stands out, either positively or negatively. John nodded, appreciating Mike's perspective. You're right. I'll spend more time here, get a feel for the team, and see if I can spot any irregularities. Their conversation was interrupted by a knock on the door. Mr. Parker, there's a delivery that needs your signature, said a young attendant, peeking through the door. Be right there, John replied, turning back to Mike. Thanks for the advice. I'll let you know how it goes. As John signed for the delivery, he couldn't shake the feeling of unease. The gas station, a symbol of his hard work and dedication, was slipping out of his control. He needed to act fast, but carefully. The next morning, John arrived at the problematic gas station, determined to uncover the root of its issues. The early bustle of commuters filled the air as cars lined up for fuel. John made his way to the office, greeted by the familiar hum of activity. Good morning, everyone, John greeted the staff, receiving a chorus of responses in return. He could sense a mix of unease and curiosity among the employees, his presence was a reminder that something wasn't quite right. John settled into the office, pulling up the security footage from the past week. Hours passed as he scrutinized every frame, noting the subtle patterns in customer and employee behavior. The footage revealed nothing overtly suspicious, but John's instincts told him there was more beneath the surface. He called a staff meeting, gathering everyone in the break room. I've noticed some troubling trends here, and I want to address them directly. Shoplifting is an issue, and our reviews are suffering. I need your help to turn this around. The employees exchanged glances, a few shifting uncomfortably. John continued, I'm not here to accuse anyone. I believe in this team, and I know we can do better. If any of you have noticed anything unusual, please come forward. After the meeting, John lingered in the break room, hoping to catch any reluctant confessions. One of the attendants, Harry, approached him hesitantly. Mr. Parker, I've noticed some things that seem off, but I didn't think they were important. John's interest was piqued. Go on, Harry, 
Anything you can tell me might help. Harry glanced around, lowering his voice. It's Alice, the manager. She's very strict, but sometimes I feel like she's too focused on certain employees, and some of the customers seem to get special treatment. John frowned. Special treatment? How so? Discounts, free items from the store. I thought it was part of some loyalty program, but it seems random, Harry explained. John thanked Harry and made a mental note to observe Alice's interactions more closely. As the day progressed, he mingled with the staff, watching for any signs of irregularities. His suspicion grew, but he needed more evidence before making any accusations. Later that evening, as the station quieted down, John reviewed the day's footage again, this time focusing on Alice. He noticed subtle patterns, frequent, whispered conversations with certain customers and those same customers, leaving with more items than they paid for. The puzzle pieces began to fit together, but John knew he couldn't confront Alice without solid proof. He needed to devise a plan to catch her in the act without causing a scene or disrupting the station's operations. As John left the station, the evening air cool against his skin, he resolved to take a more hands-on approach in the coming days. He would get to the bottom of this, not just for the sake of his business, but for the integrity and trust he had built over the years. The weekend arrived, and John found himself at a local basketball game with Mike Harris. The arena was buzzing with energy, the sound of sneakers squeaking on the court, and the crowd's enthusiastic cheers filled the air. It was a welcome distraction from the issues at his gas station, but John's mind kept drifting back to his unresolved problem. During halftime, John and Mike made their way to the concession stand. Mike, I need your advice on something, John began, trying to keep his voice steady despite his frustration. Mike glanced at him, concern evident in his eyes. What's going on, John? You look troubled. It's the gas station. Shoplifting, employee performance issues, and now I suspect the manager, Alice might be involved in some shady activities, John explained, his voice tinged with exasperation. Mike nodded thoughtfully as they grabbed their snacks and found a quiet corner to talk. You've always been thorough, John. If you suspect something, there's probably a good reason. John sighed, running a hand through his hair. I've been reviewing footage, talking to employees, but I can't make a direct accusation without solid proof. It's driving me crazy. Mike leaned back, taking a sip of his drink. Have you considered bringing in employees from other branches? Ones you trust, who have a proven track record? John frowned, contemplating the suggestion. You mean transferring them to this problematic station? Exactly, Mike replied. They know your standards and how to run things efficiently. If there's an issue with management or the staff, they'll spot it quickly. John nodded slowly, a sense of hope starting to creep in. That's a good idea. It could disrupt the other stations, but it might be worth it to fix this one. Mike smiled, clapping John on the shoulder. You've got to shake things up sometimes. It might just be the solution you need. The second half of the game began but John's mind was already churning with plans. As they watched the game, John felt a renewed sense of determination. He would follow Mike's advice and see if a fresh perspective could reveal the source of his station's troubles. The next morning, John wasted no time in implementing Mike's suggestion. He spent the early hours of the day making calls to the managers of his other gas stations, carefully selecting a few of his most trusted employees for the transfer. By midday, John stood in the office of the problematic gas station, addressing the staff. I want to introduce some new faces, he began, motioning to the three employees standing beside him. These are some of our best from other branches. They'll be here to help and observe. I hope we can all work together to improve this station. There were murmurs of curiosity and apprehension among the staff, but John remained confident. 
he introduced the new employees individually, highlighting their strengths and experience. As the day progressed, John observed the interactions, noting the subtle shifts in dynamics. One of the new employees, Sarah, approached John during a quiet moment. Mr. Parker, I've noticed something about Alice. She's very meticulous, but she has a habit of isolating certain employees. It creates a tense atmosphere. John nodded, appreciating the insight. Thank you, Sarah. Keep an eye on things and let me know if you notice anything else. As the day ended, John felt a glimmer of hope. The new team seemed to integrate well, and there was already a noticeable change in the station's atmosphere. He knew it was just the beginning, but he was determined to get to the bottom of the issues plaguing his business. A few days later, John found himself back at the gas station, this time to oversee the evening shift. The sun was setting, casting long shadows across the parking lot as the last few customers of the day filled their tanks. John stood by the office window, watching the comings and goings with a keen eye. As he stepped outside to stretch his legs, he noticed a young woman standing near the edge of the lot. Her clothes were worn, and she looked lost in thought. Curiosity piqued, John approached her cautiously. Excuse me, do you need any help? He asked gently. Startled, the woman looked up at him, her eyes wide with surprise. I'm sorry, I was just wondering if there's any work around here, she replied, her voice soft but hopeful. John's interest grew. Really? What kind of work are you looking for? Anything, honestly, she said, managing a small smile. I learn quickly and am willing to take on any job. John considered her for a moment. Do you have any papers? Yes, but I've had some issues lately, she admitted, her gaze dropping. Anticipating her struggle, John interrupted gently. Come with me. He led her into the office where the new manager, Sarah, was organizing some paperwork. Sarah, this is... I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, John said, turning to the young woman. Emily, she replied quietly. Emily, I'd like you to meet Sarah, our new manager. We're in need of some help around here. Would you be interested in working as a gas station attendant? John asked. Emily's eyes lit up with a mix of gratitude and relief. Yes, I'd love to. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Sarah looked at John, then at Emily, and nodded approvingly. Welcome aboard, Emily. I'll show you the ropes. As the evening turned into night, John watched as Sarah and Emily walked through the station, discussing the duties and responsibilities. Emily seemed eager, absorbing every detail with keen interest. John felt a sense of satisfaction. Not only had he found someone who needed a chance, but he also felt that Emily could bring a fresh perspective to the station. Before he left for the night, John pulled Emily aside. Please write down your clothing and shoe sizes. I'll arrange a uniform for you. And remember, if you have any issues, don't hesitate to come to me. Emily smiled, a hint of determination in her eyes. Thanks a lot. I can handle it. I've dealt with tougher bosses. John returned her smile, impressed by her resilience. The next morning, Emily arrived at the gas station bright and early, a mix of nerves and determination coursing through her. She was eager to prove herself and make the most of the opportunity John had given her. John was already there, checking inventory in the stock room. He looked up as Emily entered, offering her a warm smile. Good morning, Emily. Ready for your first day? Emily nodded enthusiastically. Absolutely, Mr. Parker. I'm ready to get started. Great, John replied. Sarah will show you the ropes today. Just remember, if you have any questions or need anything, don't hesitate to ask. Sarah appeared, clipboard in hand, and gestured for Emily to follow her. 
They walked through the station, Sarah explaining the various tasks Emily would be responsible for, from managing the pumps to stocking shelves and assisting customers. As they worked, Emily quickly picked up on the routines, her natural aptitude for learning shining through. However, it wasn't long before they encountered Alice, who was overseeing the morning shift. Alice eyed Emily critically. You're the new girl, huh? Let's see if you can keep up. Emily met Alice's gaze with steady determination. I'll do my best, ma'am. Throughout the day, Alice's criticisms came frequently. You're stacking those cans wrong, she pointed out, and make sure you greet every customer properly. Emily bit her tongue, absorbing the feedback and adjusting her actions accordingly. She was determined not to let Alice's harshness discourage her. By midday, she had managed to organize the storage room efficiently, impressing Sarah. During a brief lull, Sarah leaned over to Emily. Don't let Alice get to you. She's tough. But if you show her you can handle it, she'll come around. Emily nodded, grateful for the support. Thanks, Sarah. I appreciate it. As the day progressed, Emily's resilience and quick learning began to pay off. She handled the rush of customers with ease, managed the stock, and even fixed a minor issue with one of the pumps. John, observing from a distance, was impressed with her performance and her ability to handle Alice's relentless scrutiny. At the end of the day, as the sun set and the last few customers trickled in, John approached Emily. You did great today, Emily. I know it wasn't easy, but you handled everything well. Emily smiled, exhaustion mingling with a sense of accomplishment. Thank you, Mr. Parker. It was challenging, but I'm ready for more. John nodded, pleased with her attitude. Get some rest. My Coro's another day. Emily left the station, feeling a mix of tiredness and satisfaction. Despite Alice's criticisms, she had proven herself capable. Little did she know, the challenges were far from over. A week had passed since Emily's first day, and the gas station's operations had seen noticeable improvement. However, beneath the surface, tensions were brewing. One evening, John received an anonymous tip that one of the transferred employees, Brian, was sabotaging the station out of jealousy and resentment. John felt a mix of disbelief and betrayal. Brian had been one of his most trusted employees. Determined to uncover the truth, John decided to keep a close eye on him. The next day, John arrived at the station early, positioning himself discreetly to observe Brian's actions. It didn't take long for suspicious behavior to surface. Brian was seen tampering with the stock inventory and giving unauthorized discounts to certain customers. John's heart sank. He needed concrete evidence before confronting Brian, so he enlisted Emily's help. Emily, I need you to keep an eye on Brian. Report anything unusual directly to me, he instructed, his voice heavy with concern. Emily nodded, her resolve unwavering. I'll do whatever it takes to help, Mr. Parker. Over the next few days, Emily discreetly monitored Brian, noting his actions and gathering evidence. One afternoon, she caught him in the act of manipulating the station's sales records. She quickly documented the incident and informed John. Armed with the evidence, John decided it was time to confront Brian. He called him into the office, his expression serious. Brian, we need to talk. Brian entered, his demeanor defensive. What, what's this about, John? I've received reports and gathered evidence that you've been sabotaging the station, tampering with inventory, giving unauthorized discounts, and manipulating sales records, John stated, his tone firm but controlled. Brian's face flushed with anger. Who's been feeding you lies? This is ridiculous. John remained calm, presenting the evidence Emily had collected. This isn't a witch hunt, Brian. These are facts. I trusted you, and you betrayed that trust. Brian's defiance crumbled, 
replaced by a mix of guilt and resentment. I did it because I was overlooked for a promotion. I thought if I made this station look bad, I'd get another chance. John's disappointment was palpable. You went about it the wrong way, Brian. We could have addressed your concerns if you'd come to me directly. Now, I have no choice but to let you go. Brian nodded reluctantly, understanding the gravity of his actions. I'm sorry, John. I messed up. As Brian left the office, John turned to Emily, who had been waiting outside. Thank you for your help, Emily. You played a crucial role in uncovering this. Emily nodded, a mix of relief and sadness in her eyes. I'm just glad we could get to the bottom of it. Trust is so important in a place like this. John sighed, feeling the weight of the situation lift slightly. It is. And you've proven to be someone I can trust. Let's move forward and make this station better than ever. With Brian's betrayal behind them, John felt a renewed determination to improve the gas station's operations. The atmosphere was still tense, but there was a sense of hope as well. John knew that he needed to make some significant changes to ensure the station's success. The following morning, John called a staff meeting in the break room. The employees gathered a mix of curiosity and apprehension on their faces. Emily stood to the side, her presence a reminder of the recent challenges they had overcome. Good morning, everyone, John began, his tone serious yet encouraging. We've been through some tough times recently, but I believe we can turn things around. To do that, we need to implement some changes. He looked around the room, meeting each person's gaze. First, I want to foster a culture of trust and open communication. If you have any concerns or ideas, please come to me or Sarah. We're here to support you. There were nods of agreement and a few murmurs of approval. John continued, We'll also be re-evaluating our processes to improve efficiency. Sarah and I will be working closely with each of you to identify areas where we can make improvements. After the meeting, John and Sarah began working with the staff, streamlining procedures and addressing any issues that arose. Emily was quick to lend a hand, her adaptability and positive attitude making a noticeable impact. One afternoon, as John and Emily were organizing the stockroom, Emily hesitated before speaking. Mr. Parker, I have an idea that might help with customer satisfaction. John looked up, intrigued. Go on, Emily. I noticed that customers often asked for assistance with their vehicles, like checking tire pressure or oil levels. What if we offered those services as part of our customer service? she suggested. John considered the idea, a smile forming on his face. That's a great idea, Emily. It would add value to our services and show customers that we care about their needs. They implemented the new service immediately, training the staff to offer assistance with basic vehicle maintenance. The response from customers was overwhelmingly positive, and word quickly spread about the exceptional service at John's gas station. As the days turned into weeks, the station's performance improved steadily. The new services, combined with the restructured processes and improved communication, created a more efficient and positive work environment. One evening, as John was locking up, he noticed Emily still working diligently at one of the pumps. He approached her, a sense of pride swelling within him. Emily. You've been a tremendous help. Your ideas and hard work have made a real difference. Emily smiled, her eyes reflecting gratitude and determination. Thank you, Mr. Parker. I'm just glad to be a part of this team. John nodded, feeling a renewed sense of hope for the future. Let's keep up the good work. We've come a long way, but there's still more to do. As the gas station continued to flourish, the atmosphere among the staff improved significantly. 
The initial tension from the betrayal and changes had given way to a sense of camaraderie and shared purpose. Emily, in particular, had become an integral part of the team. One evening after the station had closed, Alice approached Emily. The two had developed an unexpected friendship over the past few weeks. Alice's initial harshness had softened, revealing a more compassionate side. Emily, you've done wonders here, Alice said, her tone warm. I wanted to apologize for being so hard on you at the beginning. Emily smiled, her eyes kind. Thank you, Alice. I understand you were just trying to maintain standards. I appreciate your guidance. Alice nodded, a rare smile gracing her lips. You know, when you first arrived, I thought you wouldn't last a week. But you've proven me wrong. You're a hard worker and a quick learner. Emily looked thoughtful, her gaze distant. I've had my share of challenges. It's taught me to be resilient. Alice's curiosity got the better of her. If you don't mind me asking, what brought you here? You don't seem like someone who would end up working at a gas station. Emily took a deep breath, her eyes reflecting a mix of emotions. I haven't shared this with many people, but I think you deserve to know. Emily recounted her story of being the daughter of Richard Taylor, a wealthy businessman. She explained how she had a falling out with her father and decided to prove herself independently. She left the comfort of her privileged life, determined to make it on her own. Living on the streets was the hardest thing I've ever done, Emily continued, but it taught me to appreciate every opportunity and work hard for what I want. Alice listened intently, her respect for Emily growing with every word. You've come a long way, Emily. Your story is truly inspiring. Emily smiled, a sense of relief washing over her. Thank you, Alice. I'm grateful for everything I've learned here. Their conversation was interrupted by John, who had just finished a call in the office. He joined them, sensing the depth of their discussion. Is everything all right here? Alice nodded, her expression sincere. Just getting to know Emily better. She's an impressive young woman. John looked at Emily, pride evident in his eyes. I couldn't agree more. Emily, your hard work and dedication have been invaluable. As the three of them stood together, the bonds of friendship and mutual respect solidified. The transformation of the gas station was not just in its operations, but in the relationships that had formed and strengthened through adversity. Later that night, as Emily prepared to leave, she paused to take in the scene around her. The gas station, once a place of turmoil, had become a beacon of hope and success. She felt a deep sense of belonging and purpose, something she hadn't felt in a long time. Before leaving, she approached John. Mr. Parker, I just wanted to thank you again for this opportunity. It means more to me than you know. John smiled warmly. The pleasure is mine, Emily. You've become an essential part of this team, and I'm grateful for everything you've done. Emily nodded, feeling a swell of gratitude. As she walked away, she knew that this was just the beginning of a new chapter in her life. With friends like John and Alice by her side, she felt ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The days at the gas station continued to improve, with customer satisfaction at an all-time high and the staff working harmoniously. However, the tranquility was soon disrupted by an unexpected turn of events. One afternoon, as Emily was restocking the shelves, a nosy employee named Lisa, known for her gossiping, approached her. Emily, can I ask you something? Lisa began, her tone unusually sweet. Sure, Lisa, what is it? Emily replied, busy organizing the products. I overheard something interesting the other day, Lisa said, her voice lowering conspiratorially. Someone mentioned 
you might be related to Richard Taylor, the billionaire. Is that true? Emily froze for a moment, then composed herself. Yes, it's true. Richard Taylor is my father. Lisa's eyes widened, a mixture of awe and envy. Wow. So why are you working here if your dad is so rich? Emily sighed, knowing this revelation could change everything. It's a long story, Lisa. I had a falling out with my father and decided to prove myself on my own. That's why I'm here. Lisa, unable to contain her excitement, quickly spread the news among the staff. By the end of the day, everyone knew about Emily's background. The reactions were mixed. Some were impressed, others skeptical. That evening, John called Emily into his office. His expression was serious, but not unkind. Emily, I heard about what happened today. Why didn't you tell me about your background earlier? Emily looked down, feeling a mixture of shame and regret. I wanted to prove myself without my father's influence. I didn't want to be judged by my past or my family's wealth. John nodded, understanding. I respect that, Emily, but you should know that we value you for who you are and the work you do here, not your background. Tears welled up in Emily's eyes. Thank you, Mr. Parker. It means a lot to hear that. John smiled warmly. Let's move forward from this. You've earned everyone's respect through your hard work and dedication. Don't let this change anything. Emily felt a weight lift off her shoulders. She realized that despite the gossip, she had a place where she was valued for her true self. The annual company party was fast approaching, an event that John spared no expense for. This year, it felt particularly significant given the recent trials and triumphs at the gas station. The venue was a luxurious hotel, the ballroom adorned with twinkling lights and elegant decorations. Employees from all the gas stations under John's ownership arrived, dressed in their finest. Emily, feeling nervous about how she would be perceived, chose a simple yet elegant dress. As she entered the ballroom, she was met with a mix of curious stares and warm smiles. John, noticing her arrival, approached with a reassuring smile. You look wonderful, Emily. Enjoy the evening. Emily smiled back, feeling a bit more at ease. Thank you, Mr. Parker. As the night progressed, the atmosphere was filled with laughter and the clinking of glasses. Emily found herself engaging in conversations, gradually realizing that most of her colleagues were genuinely interested in getting to know her beyond the recent revelation about her father. Midway through the evening, John took the stage to give his annual speech. Good evening, everyone. It's been a remarkable year, filled with challenges and successes. Tonight, we celebrate our hard work and dedication. I want to especially acknowledge someone who has shown incredible resilience and has become an invaluable part of our team, Emily. The room erupted in applause and Emily felt a surge of emotion. She stood, acknowledging the recognition with a humble nod. After the speech, John joined Emily at her table. I meant every word, Emily. You've made a significant impact here. Emily blushed, feeling a mixture of pride and gratitude. Thank you, Mr. Parker. This place has become like a second home to me. As the evening drew to a close, Emily found herself outside on the balcony, looking out over the city lights. Alice joined her, holding two glasses of champagne. You did well tonight, Emily. You've come a long way. Emily took one of the glasses, smiling. Thanks, Alice. I couldn't have done it without your support. Alice raised her glass. To new beginnings and lasting friendships. Emily clinked her glass against Alice's, feeling a sense of closure and optimism for the future. Inside, the party continued, but for Emily, the real celebration was the acceptance and respect she'd earned. As she looked around at her colleagues, 
she knew she had truly found her place. The buzz from the company party had barely subsided when Emily approached John with a proposition. The air was crisp as they sat on a bench outside the gas station, the early morning sun casting a golden glow. Mr. Parker, I have an idea I'd like to discuss with you, Emily began, her voice steady but filled with anticipation. John turned to her, intrigued. Go ahead, Emily, I'm all ears. Taking a deep breath, Emily continued, I've been thinking about how we can expand and improve the business. Given our location by the busy highway, I believe we have an opportunity to open a small hotel and restaurant here. Travelers often need a place to rest and eat, and this could serve as an additional revenue stream. John's eyes lit up with interest. That's a bold idea, Emily. Have you thought about the logistics and what it would take to make this happen? Emily nodded, pulling out a notebook filled with sketches and notes. I've done some research. We could start with a modest investment and gradually expand. We already have a loyal customer base, and with proper marketing, we could attract more travelers. John flipped through her notes, impressed by the thoroughness of her proposal. This is impressive work. You've clearly put a lot of thought into this. Emily smiled, feeling a surge of confidence. I believe in this idea, and I believe in what we can achieve together. John leaned back, considering the possibilities. All right, let's do it. We'll need to plan carefully and secure the necessary permits, but I think this could be a great addition to our business. Emily's eyes sparkled with excitement. Thank you, Mr. Parker. I promise I won't let you down. John chuckled. I know you won't, Emily. Let's get started. Over the next few months, the gas station transformed into a bustling hub of activity. Construction crews worked tirelessly, and the foundations of the new hotel and restaurant began to take shape. Emily and John were deeply involved in every step of the process, ensuring that their vision was realized. One afternoon, as they stood surveying the progress, Emily's father, Richard Taylor, arrived unexpectedly. The tension in the air was palpable as he approached. Emily, John, Richard greeted them, his tone measured. Mr. Taylor, John replied, shaking his hand. It's good to see you. Emily smiled, albeit nervously. Hi, Dad. What brings you here? Richard looked around, his eyes taking in the construction. I heard about your new venture and wanted to see it for myself. I'm impressed, Emily. You've done well. Emily felt a rush of emotions. Thank you, Dad. It hasn't been easy, but it's been worth it. Richard nodded, a hint of pride in his eyes. I'm glad to see you've found your path. If you ever need any advice or support, I'm here. Emily's eyes welled up with tears. I appreciate that, Dad. It means a lot. As Richard left, John turned to Emily. Are you all right? Emily wiped her eyes, smiling. Yes, I'm more than all right. This is the new beginning I needed. The construction continued at a rapid pace, and soon the hotel and restaurant were ready for their grand opening. The evening of the event, the atmosphere was electric. Guests from the local community and travelers alike filled the new spaces, eager to see what the buzz was about. John and Emily stood at the entrance, greeting guests with warm smiles. Alice, now fully supportive and part of the management team, coordinated the evening's activities seamlessly. As the night progressed, Emily found herself standing alone for a moment, taking in the sight of the thriving business she had helped create. John joined her, a look of pride on his face. You did it, Emily. Look at all this, he said, gesturing to the bustling crowd. We did it, Emily corrected, her eyes shining with gratitude. I couldn't have done this without you. John smiled, a sense of fulfillment washing over him. And I couldn't have done it without you. This is just the beginning. 
As they stood together, watching their dream come to life, Emily felt a deep sense of belonging and accomplishment. The challenges and trials they had faced only made this moment sweeter. The success of the new venture marked a significant milestone for both John and Emily. It was a testament to their hard work, resilience, and the strong bond they had formed. With the new beginning, they looked forward to a future filled with promise and endless possibilities. The success of the hotel and restaurant brought a new era of prosperity to John's business. Months passed, and the bond between John and Emily grew stronger, evolving from a professional partnership into something deeper. They found themselves spending more time together outside of work, their shared vision and mutual respect blossoming into affection. One evening, after a particularly busy day, John and Emily sat on the patio of the restaurant, watching the sun set over the horizon. The sky was painted with the hues of orange and pink, and a gentle breeze rustled the leaves of the nearby trees. Emily, I've been thinking, John began, his voice soft and contemplative. We've accomplished so much together. I couldn't have done any of this without you. Emily turned to him, her eyes reflecting the colors of the sunset. And I couldn't have done it without you, John. You believed in me when no one else did. John took a deep breath, gathering his thoughts. It's more than that, Emily. I care about you. A lot. You've become an important part of my life, not just my business. Emily's heart skipped a beat. I care about you too, John, more than I can put into words. John reached for her hand, his touch gentle and reassuring. What do you say we make this partnership official, not just in business, but in life? Tears welled up in Emily's eyes, but they were tears of joy. I'd like that very much, John. As they sat there, hand in hand, the future seemed brighter than ever. Their journey had been filled with challenges and triumphs, but together they had created something beautiful. The news of their engagement spread quickly among the staff and the local community. Congratulations poured in from all sides, and preparations for their wedding began in earnest. They decided to keep the ceremony intimate, inviting only their closest friends and family. The day of the wedding arrived, and the venue was transformed into a scene from a fairy tale. The garden was adorned with flowers, and fairy lights twinkled in the trees. Emily's father, Richard, walked her down the aisle, his eyes filled with pride and love. You've grown into an incredible woman, Emily, he whispered as they reached the altar. Your mother would be so proud. Emily squeezed his hand, her heart full. Thank you, Dad. John stood waiting, his eyes never leaving Emily's. As she approached, he felt a surge of emotion. This was the beginning of a new chapter, one that he had dreamed of for so long. The ceremony was simple yet profound, filled with heartfelt vows and promises of love and partnership. As John and Emily exchanged rings, their friends and family looked on, witnessing the union of two souls who had found their way to each other against all odds. By the power vested in me, I now pronounce you husband and wife, the officiant declared. You may kiss the bride. John and Emily's kiss was met with applause and cheers. They turned to face their guests, hand in hand, ready to embark on this new journey together. The reception was a joyous celebration, with laughter, dancing, and heartfelt toasts. Alice, who had become like a second mother to Emily, stood to speak. I've watched these two grow and overcome so much together, she began, her voice filled with emotion. Their love and partnership are an inspiration to us all, to John and Emily. May your life together be filled with happiness and success. As the night drew to a close, John and Emily stole a moment alone, looking out over the twinkling lights of the city. We've come a long way, haven't we? 
Emily said softly. John nodded, pulling her close. We have, and there's so much more to come. Emily smiled, feeling a deep sense of contentment. I can't wait to see what the future holds for us. John kissed her forehead, his heart full. Whatever it is, we'll face it together. Hand in hand, they walked back to their guests, ready to embrace the future as partners in both love and life. The challenges they had faced had only strengthened their bond, and they knew that together they could overcome anything. As they danced under the stars, surrounded by their loved ones, John and Emily knew that this was just the beginning of their incredible journey. Their love had transformed not only their lives, but the lives of those around them, creating a legacy of resilience, trust, and unwavering support. And so, with hearts full of hope and hands intertwined, they stepped into their new life, ready to face whatever adventures awaited them. Together, they were unstoppable, a testament to the power of love and partnership.